Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's Sinclair. Um, I did a poll, I want to say the day I uploaded my last video, a day after I uploaded my last video, of stuff I should make my videos about, and someone suggested clubs, so that's a very broad topic, so that's what we're going to be talking about today while I train Cinder. Um, I'd like to think that clubs are a very, very vital thing in Star Sable. It brings all of us together. I feel like if we didn't have clubs, we wouldn't have as many friends as each of us do now. Some of us would probably be on our lonesome, and the game probably wouldn't be as popular as it is right now. But, um, I feel like even without clubs, um, the club would be fine. It just wouldn't be, I mean, the club would be fine. The game would be fine. It just wouldn't be as active, and there probably would be less drama in the community, but as, us as players can control uh, how much drama is in the community and how toxic it is. It's, it's our fault, we just need to control it. It's just a matter of how mature you are, but, um, uh, someone asked me, how to run a successful club and um i've owned clubs since uh <laughs> i started my star stable career like since i was 12 years old on vela skylord my first club ever was dark mystery writers um <laughs> no one knows that club because i owned it for like a week um i remember owning that club <laughs> i remember owning that club and I'd be in Moreland thinking, oh my god, I'm going to have the biggest club. Because I didn't know that um, clubs on Star Stable had a limit. You can only have 50 people in a club. So I would be in Moreland and <laughs> Fort Penta inviting everyone, even if they were the newest person in the club in Philip. And that I saw uh, it said that the club is full. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I just disbanded. <laughs> I gave up on that club. And then, um, I got Lifetime, and I own this club, Storm Brothers, I want to say for about six months, six months to a year. It, I don't think it was a year, because, um, my account banned before the club could reach its year mark. But that club is very problematic. I can look back at it now and say that, because I was young, majority of the people that were in it were very young because majority of people that are in Storm Brothers now are in TDR and are adults and are in college, have jobs, such as I, but I don't go to college. Um, I'm just a tattoo artist and I work at a retail store, so. <laughs> but, um, and I do commissions on the side. But yeah, um, majority of the people that were in Storm Brothers are now in TDR and are. Uh, older now like I'm 19 I'm in that club when I was 12 uh, <laughs> um, some of the other people that were in Stone Brothers are here now like a good friend brand one of my good friends pie uh, blaze so many other people that were in Storm Brothers are in TDR um, my journey with the dragon ring started four years ago um when uh, here's a big tip when you start a club don't expect it to be successful that's what i did with tdr i didn't i wanted tdr at first to be just a friends club and then it blew up and i was i was astounded by it because <laughs> i didn't expect for it to do that it literally blew up within a week um but with that said, um, how to get a successful club? Um, I'd say the first thing, like I said before, is don't expect it to explode in a day, cause it won't. Uh, even if you invite every little member in the world, it's not going to. Um, there's an algorithm in Star Stable. With owning clubs and shit. Uh, the first thing you need to look for. Is a unique. 
unique. And I emphasize on unique club name. Because if you have a club name that sounds like any other club name doesn't make sense, it's probably not going to be successful. So if you're going into buying a club name and you make it sound like other successful club names, you're either going to get shit for it, you're going to get shit for it, and your club's not going to be successful because it's <laughs> it's a ripoff of the real club. Your best way is to look through those club names however long it takes and pick out a unique club name. I want to say it took me a few minutes, a few, like, I want to say half an hour to make this club. I went through a few names because if I didn't pick the Dragon Ring, this club was going to be named the Knight's Legion. <laughs> and I'm glad I picked the Dragon Ring because... That sounds badass. It was actually the first club that I used without, like, the third name without being, it, like, Legacy. Because back then, everyone, everyone used Legacy. Like, <laughs> Red Hearts Legacy. I was in that club for a bit. Um, before I owned this club. Uh... Sparkle Kittens Legacy, if anyone remembers that, that club was cool. Uh, there were some other ones I, don't, I can't remember, but everyone used Legacy. Um, yeah, just pick a unique club name that's... <laughs> I can't stress that enough, because if you pick a name, like I said before, that sounds like another club name, like, I've had this done with TDR a lot. Um... There's a few club names running around, pretending to be TDR, but I don't say anything. Neither do my club members, we just, <laughs> we just notice it. But the best thing for you to do is to pick a club name that is unique, and that comes from the heart, and not something that sounds like another thing. Um... I would say have a positive environment, and I'm not <laughs> XD positivity. No, um, you can't be positive all the time, like I said before. Um, just don't involve drama, and I've learned this the hard way because I'm a growing. You, when you have uh, clubs, at first you're really protective over it, and I'm still protective over TDR. Like hella shit. Like <laughs> this club is my baby, and I don't like kids. So yeah. Um, if there's drama and someone's causing shit, nip it in the bud. Uh, I used to be really, really overprotective over members of my club, and they'd just leave the next day, so I've learned to, um, not do that shit. If someone's causing drama and it's reported to you, I'd say just remove it, because if you remove the source of the problem, it would be better off than just keeping them in there and having them cause more problems. Or just talk to that individual, and if they stop doing it, they stop doing it. Community, community, communication is key. Um, TDR used to have a really bad rep, um, because <laughs> I did not, I did not, um, put my foot down with that shit. I let people post on their stories and I, you can't really control what people post on their stories but you can say hey uh that's not very mature it doesn't make us look good can you not do that that's the best way to do it instead of yelling at them and i didn't really yell at anyone i just let them do it but um posting shit on your stories adding yourself into conversations that don't need to be involved um shit like that um, just don't involve your club in drama. And I've learned that the hard way. I don't involve myself in much drama anymore. Unless it's something that I feel really strongly about. Then I'll put something in my story about it. And if I put something in my story about it and I'm ranting, that means I care about it. Um, I've just, I've grown old with the, um, childish bull. Like I said, I'm 19. Jesus. I don't need to deal with that anymore, and neither should anyone, really. We're all in this game trying to have fun. 
And with clubs, you can do that. You dee. But um, you just need to have a stable club to do so. And um, I'd say to have a stable club and to involve your members with everything, you need social media. Um, and some people would disagree with that because there are a lot there are a lot of people on Star Stable that don't have social media, and that's totally fine. That's totally fine. But um like having Discord and Instagram helps a lot with communication. I cannot find the place I need to go to. Where the hell Oh there it is. <laughs> um because social media and Discord can help you communicate with your members. Along the note with Instagram. Um sorry. Excuse me. Um was Instagram. A good way to get your club name out there is to have Instagram. Now, I've made all the art and stuff for my Instagram. Um so I can control if it looks good or not. But if you have a clean Instagram and clean stories and nice put together organized posts, then that catches people eye people's eyes, bright colors and stuff. Um People look for stuff like that. They look for a nice put together club that looks organized. Um <laughs> TDR's old Instagram I don't know what happened to it uh, it went on hiatus and I think I logged out of it and it got deleted somehow we used to have like 2,000 followers but right now we have around 300 that's growing um, but the best way to grow your activity on your account is to post every day and That'll be hard if your club isn't active. Now, TDR is extremely active. We've lowered, we've talked to the club, and we've set our schedule for the club together. Which means, um, since there's school right now, it's about to be Thanksgiving, so we'll do some activities then if people are around. Because it's Thanksgiving. They're probably going to be out with family. But, um, Right now, we only have mandatory all-club dressage on Fridays at 7. And then we're doing Elite Wings. Elite Wings is our advanced dressage competition team. We're doing tryouts for them during the week, and it's optional. And then I let people in the club who want to teach dressage optional uh, on certain days. They just talk to me, and they set a schedule, and they post it. Now, um, uh, attendance. TDR, our attendance policy is, uh, if you put an unexcused absence for an event that, because we have a calendar, right now we have a calendar, we had a calendar for November, and we have a calendar for December already out, so people know what we're doing. If, you, if they put in an absence a day before, a week before, a month before, they're good. But if they put it the day of, that's when they get marked for it. Because they had time to do it. And they're pretty good about it. And if they have to be out for it and it's an emergency, they just talk to us and they're fine. But if you get three marks, then you have to be removed from the club. That's just our policy. Um, that's how the staff did it. And I know some people are like, you have an attendance policy? Well, of course we do. It's a very active club. We get 40 plus applications a day. And there's people who really want to be in this club. And if people don't value it, then their spot in the club, then someone else will. And I know that's hard for some people who are just starting out clubs. And that's probably not what you should do when you just started out. I'd say let those people in. Because when people see you want... As many people in your club that are good, valuable people that aren't dramatic and start stuff. Because people look for club names. If your club name is seen around, then people are going to want to join. Because people want to join popular clubs. There are some people that just want to join clubs to get out of being um, 
repetitively added and all I have to say to that is there's a notification button but I don't invite people randomly anymore I used to do that when I first started owning clubs but with that said applications and I know some people don't like applications because it's an online club but um there's gonna be applications for everything in your life schools jobs everything a position um in the star stable there is there's no difference it's a club people want to know how much effort you're gonna put in for your club and that's what I look for on my applications usually on my applications if I see that someone hasn't put any effort just yes no I'll delete it because it just shows tells me that they're not putting much effort into their application um if I see that they put uh, effort like people have put paragraphs and books in the application and I love reading it that shows me that they put effort in and they really want to be in the club and I'd say look for stuff like that um, usually people who just put yes now are just going to be fillers in your club, which means they'll just join and never get on again. That's happened a lot. Um, and you can't really control it because people have lives, but if they're not going to be active, just tell them that they, they're not active enough and you have to remove them. Um, and also the thing, uh... Just make sure you're doing activities with your club. Uh, TDR randomly will put up activities if you just feel like it. Barbecues, trail rides. Um, we'll do random dressage practices if we feel like it. Um, on the weekends at night, we'll do manhunt, which is like hide and seek at night. We'll all dress in black. I have a video about that coming up soon. Of all us just fucking around. Um... Some unique things that TDR uses. TDR has a mental health status in our closed server. Which means that the members every day, they can click if they're feeling good today, if they're feeling bad, if they need to talk to... I just clicked the wrong fucking thing. If they need to talk to someone and... uh. We'll look at it every day, the staff will, and if someone needs help, we will reach out. We just do that so we know so we know how our members are feeling because there are some people, and I'm like this too, who don't like talking about their problems and will keep it bottled up until someone asks. And if they have the opportunity to just click something to tell people, hey, I'm not feeling good today, I need help, um, TDR has the option to do that. Because I care about my drags, the staff cares about their drags, and the drags care about other drags. We all care about each other in this family. Um, I know everyone in my club by their nickname. I say hi to them when they log on. I say hi to them whenever I see them on social media. We're always talking to each other, and we understand how each other feel. And I'll give space to people who need space, such as for clubs and stuff, because they've told me. Hey, I need you to do this. I can't really be active. And I'll understand that. Um, that's a good thing about being a good club owner is to understand life is life. People need to do things. Um, I'm not as strict with TDR as I was in the summer. We used to have dressage three times a week in the summer. And, uh... It was really hectic, and some of the members weren't happy, so we changed that. So now we only have it on one day a week, so that during the week, they can do their schoolwork. They can do whatever they need to do, and then on Fridays, usually people are home from school. They're staying up. They're free to do things, so that's why we have it on Fridays. And if, they, if there are people that want to do extra dressage and able to do it, and they can do Elite Wings and they can try out for that that has more dressage in it. Because there are people in TDR that don't like dressage. And that's fine with me because we're a dressage eventing club. Um, if they don't want to do dressage, they only have one day to do it. 
and then they're fine. I just went the total wrong way, but you know, that's okay. Uh, the most difficult thing about running a large club. Um, some people leave without communication, which that means like, they'll join the club and then they'll leave and not tell I don't know if we have a really theme for our club other than dragons and like uh, gothic atmosphere and we use metal songs for everything because I'm a metal fanatic so is my girlfriend the co-owner of TDR and a lot of other people in the club love metal and then there's some that like BTS <laughs> I'm not a big fan of BTS but to each their own um and then some like country, like Faith likes country. I like country too. I just would rather metal. Speaking of country, this ring a ding ding music that's playing with this <laughs> this race. Um. Uh, my club versus other clubs. Um. I wouldn't. Mm, my club's very different. That's all I gotta say. We we are a different bunch of people. We're weird as hell. We're not afraid to show our true colors. Um, we're very LGBTQ supporting. Uh, we got some furries in the club. Such as I. Fuck. It's like, it's nine in the morning. Uh, I'm a furry. Siren's a furry. My girlfriend's a furry. We got a ton of furries in our club. And there's nothing wrong with furries. I know there's some people that feel like furries are all people that fucking suits, but, um, nope, not, nope, no, no, <laughs> not me, not my girlfriend, and not Siren, we don't do that shit, we just do it for the art, drawing, anthropomorphic characters, that's all we do, uh, we're a weird bunch of people, <laughs> You can see that in our calls. We just we don't we have no filter while we're in calls with each other. We just fuck around with each other, make each other laugh, and that's that's making memories with your club will make people happy. If they're having fun, there's a probability that they will stay. You just have to have fun with your club. You can't be serious all the time, and I learned that the hard way. Because I always thought that if you didn't be serious, then your club wouldn't be stable. You can be serious and retarded at the same time, if that makes sense. Make your club members laugh. I make my club members laugh by even talking. Like, um... <laughs> I know I'm gonna get comments about this. Eli. I call Eli... Eli. I know it's... Uh... I can't even... Elite. I know it's called Elite, but I will always call it Elite. Um, <laughs> my club bullies me about that. I just call it Elite. I don't care. I know it's called Elite. They bully me, but you know, you gotta have little jokes like that. Um, picking your club outfit. It needs to match your club theme, like the club color. Make your club color match your club name. Now, the dragon's ring. You can pick any color for that, but my favorite color was blue and green, so our colors are blue and green. And a lot of people don't know that our secondary color is green, but yeah, it's neon green. Your outfit just needs to make sense, it needs to look nice, and you need to make it not look like any other club's outfit, because you will get backlash for that. I know a lot of people are like, it's just an outfit. Uh, yeah, but you can still pick an outfit that's different. There's so much clothes and stuff in Star Stable that you can use. 
Um. Uh, your logo needs to look nice. And the my best advice with club logos and stuff. If you feel like you can't draw or you can't edit, there are so many artists in the community that you can commission. Like, a very good friend of mine, April Purple Knight, is an astounding artist. She does commissions for whole Instagram formats. And she works very hard in her edits. Uh, I'd recommend her. I do commissions. Um, <laughs> I do art all the time. I've done it since I was a kid. Um, and there's so many p other people in the uh, community that does art. And it's good to promote your uh, fellow artists in your community. Because some of them, some of them, such as I, like, live off those commissions. It's just extra money that can help you around. Um. Um. That's all I really gotta say about clubs today. Um. If you have any, uh, suggestions about things I should talk about or any questions about clubs that you want me to answer just go ahead and put them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer I'm love seeing your guys comments uh <laughs> my comment from my last video was that my voice was relaxing and that my voice was attractive <laughs> thank you I guess but um if you have any questions or any uh things that you would like to be announced or something that you want to talk to me about go ahead and um sound off in the comments below i have all my social media links in the description below and i hope you guys have a very good day bye